can I put you on the spot for oh, a second? Oh, put me on the spot, So, Tom. you know, I'm putting you on the spot. I love so, it. Yeah. You, you say, you know, you sprinkle it out and there's enough. You've got 32 here. How do you really know it's enough? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, how do you know that that's enough or because, too much? All know? right, so. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here and today I'm just kind of wandering around. I wanted to talk a little bit about feeding turtles and tortoises and maybe all your reptiles. People always ask, how much should I be feeding these guys, you know? And um, that's always a great question and what's the frequency? So here at the camp, what I like to do is I really like to feed them during the week three times. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, obviously, sometimes life intervenes and things get blown out of whack, so you know you may not always adhere to that schedule, but I find that these animals enjoy uh, and learn the schedule. Um, today, I'm feeding out my uh, Fluker tortoise diet. These guys are great. This is a semi-moist diet that they manufacture that I really love because, as you can see, it's got all sorts of great nutrients in it, and it's moist, so these guys are gonna get a little bit of moisture in their food as well. And you guys notice how I've laid down this hay. Um, I'm now feeding all the animals on hay again, as I kind of had the trouble with our friend, the radiated tortoise. So I want to make sure that we don't have any more issues with impaction. It's one of the things when feeding your animals you have to be careful of. Make sure they don't ingest too much foreign objects into their, into their alimentary canal. So I like to just give them a little bit of this as a treat. They'll get this about once a week, okay? And I just sprinkle it down. They're gonna sniff it out and eat it. And then in addition to cactus pads and uh, I do collard greens uh, a couple times a month, I of course use our tortoise diet here. And you can see the, you know, you guys have seen these guys come from miles around. So how much do I feed, especially when you have 32 of a species? Um, I like to just make a line and I've just been doing this for so long, I know how much these guys are gonna eat and consume. So I basically make a large line here with about 20 or 30 small handfuls of the tortoise diet. And they have really good noses and these guys come from all over the habitat and they come and eat. Um, I'm gonna give them a little bit more than this because as I said, there's 32. But the key is guys, less is more with these animals. You don't wanna overfeed them. Um, I like to just, I'd rather have a little less than they need than a little bit more. Because as I've mentioned in other videos, turtles and tortoises, uh, they're a species of animal that have adapted to live in sometimes very hostile environments. Not only hostile environments is what keeps them from eating a lot, but the fact that they're slow, slow and steady. They're not exactly predators. They're not exactly fast animals. So they wander around and they, excuse me, we got a, we got a situation. They wander around and they wind up um, nibbling on foods that they encounter when they roll through their home range. Uh, these animals do have a home range. They do know where the water is. They do know where the food is and when the food is gonna be ready for them. As in fact, some turtles uh, and tortoises rather will wait at the base of trees like my mango trees. They know when the fruits are gonna ripen and fall and they all kind of congregate. And so that tells me these animals have memory. They know certain areas are gonna provide them with food and it's very, very interesting. We're talking about animals that have lived for millions and millions of years and uh, they have to have uh, great survival instincts and skills in order to accomplish that feat. A million years or like 65, 250 million years actually on earth, turtles and tortoises, uh, some of the oldest fossils have been found. That means these animals have done it right for a very long time. So we're gonna leave it with this. These guys are gonna get a little treat. You see, they love that fluker stuff. The, the crafted cuisine is really great. That one's chowing down on it. So they've got a nice mixture of food. Can I put you on the spot for oh, a second? Oh, put me on the spot, So, Tom. you know, I'm putting you on the spot. I, I love know, it. Yeah. You, you say, you know, you sprinkle it out and there's enough. You've got 32 here. How do you really know it's enough? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, how do you know that that's enough or because, too much? You all know? right, so years ago, I would at least, uh, you know, you read these books and it's like, put as much food as the animal will eat in five minutes. So you kind of figure it out. That's so a good way to think so about you it. put it, you put a little food out, and at the end of the five minutes, if you have food left, then you know that you might have fed too much. If you have food gone quicker, you can probably afford to give them a little bit more. So that's a good rule of thumb. Now, I have to kind of 
take into consideration the, the knuckleheads that are going to be coming out of there. And believe me, if you look right now, go over there, you'll see there's a tortoise that wants to come out. But why can't it come out, Tom? Because the door the is blocking door's him. Shut, Tom. We need a doing? sliding door. Yes, I need sliding doors. Oh. We'll wait for you on this side. Hold on. Hold on. These guys have such good noses he's, that they knew. He's jonesing to come out. Oh, they're they're totally trying to come out, dude. They know that they're <laughs> So they know, they have great noses. So these guys are gonna make it over there and they're gonna wind up chowing down. So it's a matter of just making sure, I don't like to see wasted food. I'd rather them have eaten the food uh, all up than leave food there because then that attracts rats and uh, potential predators like raccoons and stuff. So I only feed them a little bit. And I, you gotta also remember guys, I've planted these in these enclosures. I'll throw cactus pads in throughout the day just to- It's like a backup plan then. Sort exactly, of like they're exactly. always, they got a snack. They always but you know, the snack. five minute thing I find interesting because in all this time, I don't think I ever- I've never said that. Thing, yeah, ever. in all the and years. it's probably yeah. always in the back of your head when you're doing it, isn't it? Yeah, I just, I never actually got it out, but yeah. Five minutes, how much they can eat in five minutes. Now, obviously you kind of lose track. So if I come back in a half hour and this stuff's still here, um, it's probably too much. Cause as you can see, they're just pouring out. So let's continue on. I'll show you, you know, I mean, it, it varies for how many animals I have and um, uh, what species I have. Some I've learned are just much more uh, aggressive feeders. Also guys, take into consideration the time of year. Right now it's the cool season here at Camp Kennan. So these animals really aren't looking for all that much food. So I dial back the food in the summer as well. In fact, when you're, feeling, uh, when you're feeding the carnivores, like my monitor lizards, I go from three days a week to maybe two, and sometimes once a week with a bigger meal. In the summer? In the winter. Oh, in the winter, when yes. When it cools okay, down. that's what I thought. Yeah, right, when yeah. it cools down, you know, I slow down on feeding. All the elongated turtles, uh, tortoises right now are waking up and sunbathing. All of the... Uh, all of the uh, cherry heads, uh, they're inside, but it's very possible, just to show you, it's very possible that they're going to realize there's food out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle this stuff down. We're probably gonna run through most of this. If I have to go grab another box of it, I will, thanks to Fluger. They've really been fantastic, but I like to give them, you know, quite a lot. Now, you, what's great about this Crafted Cuisine is if you have one or two tortoises, this bag will last you quite a bit. And it's Ziploc, so you can reseal it and refrigerate this after you have used it, uh, after you've opened the bag. So we're just gonna do this, okay? And we're gonna see, oh, we can't forget our rock iguanas. We're gonna go see them as well. They're gonna be hungry. And I've got a bag of this for them. But before I do that, again, just a few handfuls. And, and you know, not everyone is gonna have as many tortoises um, as I do, you know, essentially I've got something of a farm, you know? So I'm just basically gonna throw out what I think they'll eat here on a cool day and that's it. Remember this stuff is so nutrient dense. All the things we're giving them is so nutrient dense. Usually they're walking around eating a weed and it, it doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it. That's why they eat so much. And that's why in their digestive system, all herbivores have very long digestive systems and uh, turtles, tortoises, and of course- uh, Pretty iguanas. cool that you can use the same stuff for the iguanas. It is awesome. That's How convenient is that? I mean- Yeah, that's super convenient. That's something that I was really excited about because um, it's just easy now. It's just easy that they all enjoy the same food. Here's Petra and Petra. And they know it's it's breakfast time. So I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna give them, oh, they go right for the, look at that, they go right for the, uh, hey, get out of here. Come here, I don't know what What? You gotta be careful, they get so excited that sometimes they'll go after your fingers. Oh, <laughs> like, I get nervous. Like little doggies. Little doggies, look at them go. So they're eating the Fluker uh, Crafted Cuisine, they like it. And I'm not gonna give them too much of the Missouri today, the tortoise diet, just, just sprinkle some in, but they really do love it all. So we'll just give a little bit because we don't want, I want them to be eating the other stuff. It kind so. of brings me to another thing. Like if you're a, guy, a person who's getting into it, you're still in the early years of uh, becoming a reptile keeper. Yep. You start with tortoises maybe. Yeah. You want to go to lizards. It's probably best to go to a vegetarian lizard because you're already, um, 
capable of getting the food and you're comfortable you're, with that type of food. Right, so at least um, it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Tons easier, definitely. Um, and then there are also people that don't really enjoy feeding, um, you know, other animals, uh, you know, mice and so on. They might be vegans themselves. So uh, there are options that you can just keep herbivorous reptiles. Um, it's it's really great reptiles are awesome animals they come in many different shapes and sizes as you know and i just think they're fantastic and so many people don't give them the credit they deserve because many times we keep these animals in very sterile boring conditions and what we've always tried tom here on the channel as you know is just really show people another way to keep these animals they're living works of art and i love them so much and so it's awesome to do it like this where i have the space uh but I don't know, man. I just think it's a, they're rewarding animals to work with. They're constantly amazing. Watch your head coming out. You got it. We're going to go inside the lizard cage too. Everyone gets so excited on feeding day. All right. We're going to. Maybe I'll throw a little couple handfuls out for the elongated. Again, I'm not gonna do a lot. I'm just gonna throw this out. They can eat off these leaves, off the pine needles. I'm not worried about any impactions with these guys because there's no pebbles or soil that they can really uh, eat. So no worries. So there'll be some food that they'll wake up. And what's cool about when I spread it out like that is they smell it, they search out for it. So there's some enrichment happening with their uh, they're feeding as well. All right, let's head over here, Tom. We're gonna go inside because the natives over there are getting restless. So I love going in the uh, in with them. And again, you're getting an idea of just how much food I put out. Um, it's I I've said it how many times now in this video. Less is more. I'm just gonna throw this away. You don't necessarily need to come back here, but thanks. Uh, there are the blue iguanas, my Lewisai. We're gonna give them two small handfuls, and that food will be gone. Any food that has not been eaten, I pull out and I throw into the ponds and it gets used again. It, it gets a second chance to be eaten. These guys are funny, they're still pretty skinny. Here's some food for them, you see they take right to it. So just two small handfuls, that's it. Those pellets, they expand once they get moist. So they're gonna expand inside their stomachs and I don't wanna overfeed them here because you're asking a lot of their uh, digestive systems in this kind of cool weather. They do have heat inside that cave so they'll lay on those heaters and they'll be able to digest by raising their body temperatures. But rock iguanas really need temperatures well in the hundreds, about 110, 120 degrees in order. Oh boy, we gotta let them out. In order to properly thermoregulate. So here's Guapo and Lola, welcome outside kids. I'm just gonna give them a little of this. Just, this is all they're gonna get. And they'll eat it all up. Come on guys. You want one? See if they're hungry. Oh yeah. Always hungry, never full. My big girl. There you go. And Guapo will come on out. See, she's always mean to Guapo. I don't know why. I don't know why she's so mean to that guy. Come here kids, look. Uh-huh. So they're gonna come on out. The Chinese box turtles are in here, but they're still hunkered down. So we're gonna let them do their thing. I really wanna get some food into this maniac. Crazy Sophia and Stumpy. Now I can legit lose a finger here. Oh yeah, she's nuts. She gonna get me? Yeah. Oh, he's biting me. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> she's nuts. I told you. It's a little bit what you call uh, what's the word? Crazy. Come on. There you go. There you go. Mm. She's very, very food motivated. That is like a legitimate snap. <laughs> yeah, a legitimate lunatic. Let me show Stumpy that there's some food out here. So he'll kind of wake up. She really won't finish that whole thing. They're pretty good about eating what they want and leaving the rest, but you can overfeed some animals. So turtles and tortoises will sometimes eat, 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 eat because they're programmed to do that all day long, but they're not eating, as I mentioned, really high nutrient uh, rich foods. So Inky is inside of her house. Oh no, Inky is not. Look, there's the inks, big old inks. She's getting big, huh? Yes, she is. That's unbelievable. Isn't that amazing? That is unbelievable. That is the cool lizard, man. She is, uh, and of course, she's looking for a way out. Always. Always. Yeah, she's, uh, yeah, that one, when she looks at you, you can see she's working things out, yeah? <laughs> That's uh, Jurassic Park. Anyway, she's pretty awesome. So I'm glad to see her out and about. 
she'll get some food here probably later on today. I want to let it warm up a little bit more. That's the other thing when you're keeping them outside, you got to know their physiology. Let it warm up a little bit more. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just walk right out. I'll, <laughs> I'll get that loony. Good stuff, man. Oh, Good solid. stuff. Little shed. I like to scratch her. I just like to always give them a little love. Yes, they're saving that shed. I want to send oh, it in our postcard. That's on right. Patreon. Did you say shit? That's a bad word, Tom. No, I said I didn't say that. Shed. Shed. Oh, see, you I said the bad. Word, I said the bad me. word. Look at me. What a jerk. <laughs> Watch your head, Tom. Yeah. Thank Don't you. bonk your head thank walking you. out, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, Tom. Uh, you know, knock on wood. It's he's been here a couple of days and he hasn't broke his nose or. I hit it once. Oh, I hit my head. I hit my head on the Slinky's cage, but that's all right. All right, you'll be all right. Tom always <laughs> comes away with a new. Uh, a new bump or bruise whenever he's hanging out at the camp. All right, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, let's go get these radiated tortoises fed, the galops and then the sulcatus, and then we're done. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's fun, man. I'm outside, I get to see the animals. We've got an ibis right here. They'll sometimes snack on the food. So I get all these native birds coming down. I love it, man. I think it's a really awesome uh, backyard, front yard, whole yard, really. So it's cool to do this. But yeah, so I hope this video makes sense for you guys. You know, the reason I ask this as well about these are, you know, this is Christmas time, right? Yes. Some people might be thinking about or Getting have already given a baby or a young tortoise or turtle to a yeah. young enthusiast. That's right. And can they handle it? Like how yeah, much older? That's there, right. What would that chore be for a 10 year old kid who's getting his first? Yeah. You know? Well, you know, I mean, I think having a pet reptile or a pet of any kind is a great learning experience. Uh, reptiles teach you about the natural world. Uh, they teach you responsibility, how to care for animals. Uh, and they're fascinating and rewarding. And now we know so much, we know how to really keep them and keep them in the right way. And so with the efforts of this channel and some other channels and, you know, just all the literature out there, uh, you, you really can't go wrong as long as you make sure you have the time to spend with the animal, you have the space for the animal, and you are 100% committed to prov providing them with all the husbandry needs they need, they, they have to have. And you look, they see me, they start coming, right? It's the coolest thing. They come from far and wide. Uh, I have the hay set up here, and I've got a little tray on the opposite side over here. And so I'll put a couple of handfuls on either side because sometimes the distance is too great for them to smell. So we've got a tortoise over here. What I'm gonna do is simply move this. See this tray, it's a little restaurant tray, a cafeteria tray that I got at a, you know, at a, a restaurant depot situation. And that's all I'm gonna put guys because a couple of those pellets is really gonna hit the spot. Check this out. You'll be amazed at how much I feed the giant tortoises, few handfuls, and they gain weight and they look good and they're healthy. So you don't wanna overdo it. You don't have to overdo it. And uh, the frequency, like I said, you can feed a tiny bit each day or you can feed larger, larger amounts throughout the week. I like the three day a week schedule with some snacks on the weekend because everyone loves to give their animals treats, yeah? So here's Nostradamus and Socrates. One, two, right? In that tray. And we're gonna do the same thing here. And with this one, it's hard to kind of get these guys to get just focus on their own. So here's one, two, and then I noticed the other night they pushed their tray into their house. Give me one second. I gotta go in here. And come right back in. About the biggest challenge is getting them to realize the food is in the tray and not in the bucket. So that's it. These guys are gonna eat that. Remember, they got this whole enclosure. Look, Socrates found it. So they're gonna wander around. Um, I like to leave this for the day. They'll probably, they'll get right through all this food during the entire day. And believe me when I tell you, they're heavy, they're gaining weight, and they're getting bigger. So less is more, less is more. Uh, they pulled out the hose. I had this coming on a timer, Tom. That's what's keeping that water nice and clean. It just overflows, creates a mud hole. Water all the time. You really should have water in their cage uh, at clean all times. Clean water all the time. That's right, clean water at all times. Let's go, we're gonna give the rest of this good stuff to our sulcata tortoises. Uh, they are powerhouses, they love to eat. Many of you have them, you know what I'm talking about. So it's, uh, 
as you can see, the time it took us to make this video is the time it took me to feed all my herbivores. Uh, later on, I'll do some rodents or fish for the lizards, but we just recently did a lizard feeding. I just really wanted to answer this question because we keep seeing it come up time and time again. And you know, our channel is all about making your lives easier, answering questions for you and having a good time. So let's do it right now. Knock that rock off. We got some hay down here and I'm just gonna make my line. And that's it, everyone's fed. So now I'm just gonna relax, sit down, watch the onslaught of food or tortoises towards the food. And uh, you guys, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go feed your animals, right? Go, go do that. All right guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you real soon. Let me know what you got in the comments. What are you guys feeding? What do you like? What do you have? I wanna know in the comments below, let me know. See you later.